There are missions that, often with good reason, are abandoned shortly after. Instead, others, like the protagonist of this story, were endowed with an absolute exceptional stamina and willpower, to the point that, even today, he is considered one of the greatest maintainers of all time, a legendary figure. The life of Austrian mountaineer Hermann Bull culminates in a thrilling end when, in 1953, at the age of 29, he climbs alone to the summit of Nanga Parbat. For many, the feat is considered more impressive than the first ascent of Everest, and its history has been very exciting. Bull was a true hero of the mountain. He proved that with the passion and art of getting by, it's almost possible to do anything. Bull is part of an Austro-Germanic expedition. The Himalayan giant is still untouched despite the many attempts made by the Germans before the Second World War. In the meantime, however, the French expedition have climbed it Annapurna in 1950, while the English colonists have just climbed the Everest. The Italians will be on K2. Therefore, the Germans are pushing for the place in high altitude history. The expedition besieges the mountain in perfect 15th style. The mountaineers begin by equipping the ascent road with fixed ropes and fields. They climb slowly, placing half of the fields that would be needed to safely reach the top of the mountain. But the decision is made to try anyway. The top team is formed by Hermann Bull and Otto Kemper. On the morning of the decisive day, Hermann leaves alone. Kemper suffers from altitude sickness. Bull climbs slowly up the slopes of Nanga, an exhausting journey that becomes exhausting. But he does the summit, making the first absolute ascent, without oxygen and alone, starting from the last field, the only case among the absolute firsts of an A to Zander. Over the course of 40 hours, Bull alone travelled a road not only of a great height, but also of a considerable length development. Caught by the darkness at the beginning of the descent, on the wall and without the possibility of looking for a more suitable place to camp, Bull had to spend the night standing, leaning against the wall and without a sleeping bag, at an altitude of about 8000 meters. That's considered one of the greatest feats in the history of mountaineering. The day after the summit, he descended without the ice axe, which he inadvertently left at the summit and with only one crampon. During the final part of the climb, he made use of pervitin, a methamphetamine, which he had brought with him in an emergency. This gave him an impulse for the last stretch, and above all, for the return to the base. In each case, he climbed much of the mountain alone, without the bivouacs and with very little equipment. Today, as yesterday, it would be interpreted as a suicidal gesture. Bull suffered severe frostbite on his feet, after which two toes of his right foot were amputated on his return to base camp. Bull's role on Rekiot or Est Ridge was only repeat once in 1971. The following year, he returned in Pakistan his time towards the Karakorum, where with others he succeeded in the first ever ascent of Broad Peak. Bull died a few days later while trying to make the first ascent of Chocolisa, a mountain of over 7000 meters, not too much difficult, in front of the Concordia Plateau, together with uh, Diggenberg. The two, after having given up the summit due to wind and fog, went back towards Concordia. They proceeded untied in the middle of a thick fog along a ridge. One step on the faint frame of snow and they fell into a ravine. Bull died at the age of 33. Despite the research, his body has never been found. The Tyrolean Hermann Bull made the almost impossible, said Reinhold Messner. It was an unparalleled undertaking. We will remember he with this famous phrase which perhaps contains the meaning of life. Mountaineering is an exhausting activity. One climbs higher and higher and never reaches the destination. Perhaps this is the most fascinating aspect. We constantly looking for something that will never be achieved.